Today we're looking at a series of incredible ghost sightings from the YouTube channel Ghosts of Carmel, Maine. This channel is run by Kent Burris and showcases a ton of strange and creepy content that he's collected over the last three years. So if you enjoy any of the content I show you in this video, I recommend you check out his channel and subscribe after this video. Link in the description. I chose this channel today not simply because of the quality of the things that Kent captures, but also because of the authentic feel of his channel and the amount of stress this guy seemingly goes through living in the haunted lamb house. I'm pretty good at reading people's vibes, and from what I can tell, Kent genuinely comes across as a person stuck living in a really creepy place. He has to make do, so the best he can do is to try and capture as much of the creepy stuff as he can and put it out there for the world to see and comment on. To kick things off, here is one of the creepiest recurring things Kent has to live with. Lovingly titled by Kent as The Shadow Dude, this dark shadowy apparition has appeared numerous times before him. This thing is one of those turn around and he's standing right there kind of ghosts. It's unsettling, it's horrifying, and I don't understand how he lives with it, but I assume you can get used to almost anything if you see it enough. Hello? Are you talking? What the hell is that noise? Son of a bitch! Notice how Kent stands there planning out his next move. Remember now, this isn't the first time Kent has seen this thing in his house. It appears, and then it disappears. Hello? The light source between the crack is blocked and then unblocked. So whatever that shadow dude is... I see movement in the bedroom through that crack. It's apparently moving. Need to get out of here. Is that you, shadow dude? I don't ever turn this freaking light out. I don't even know how this light got out. I leave this light on because of certain reasons like this. Hello? So here is a freeze frame clip of Shadow Dude. Kent tries his best to look at this spooky clip under different light spectrums, but the quality of the image and the limitations of his editing program prevent a super in-depth look. So I've tried my best to get as clear of an image as I can from these frames. What do you think this is? Is it a shadow figure? Is it a ghostly apparition? Or perhaps it's just a person with really bad lighting? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Notice how this shadow apparition now starts to look like a person. If you look closely at this image, you can almost see half the silhouette of a man's face. It looks like an older, white male. After altering the lighting and the contrast, it almost looks like an eye, half of a nose, and half of a mouth. To better illustrate this visual for those of you who don't see it, I looked up a generic middle-aged male stock photo and I found this guy. Next, I turned down the transparency of this guy and laid it over top of the original screenshot. And if we zoom in and flip back and forth between the superimposed middle-aged man and the creepy shadow thing, you can see the outline of a face. What do you think? Either way, this image is insanely creepy. And later in this video, you'll see the blue-shirted man again, so keep these visuals in mind. As Kent checks the room and looks for anything out of place, he makes a comment that made me personally crack up because it's exactly what you'd assume a normal middle-aged guy would say in such a scary predicament. I've definitely got to take a blood pressure pill. Holy crap. I started you off with that creepy footage to get you hooked, but now let's go deeper into Kent's catalog of videos. Up next is his original video for Ghost of Carmel, Maine. It's called The Flying Horse. It takes place in the exact same room as the last clip. This time, Kit has set up a camera in his bedroom to capture some of the spooky things that he's been hearing and seeing. As you'll see in this short clip, a toy horse above his computer goes flying.
Another clip from this channel shows a bedroom door seemingly opening and closing on its own. This next clip shows something being ripped off the wall above Kent's bed. All of these, while very creepy, could possibly be explained. A string, a rigged mechanism, the horse leaning, the door being pushed by air pressure, or an object being yanked down. There are a ton of possibilities, but again, the sheer number of things captured in and around this room lead me to believe these could also be real. As we dive further into the captured evidence, let me know what you think. The next creepy occurrence we'll be looking at today took place during a birthday party for Kent's daughter. I've blurred her face for her own privacy, but ignore that and look behind the birthday presents. What looks like a face is nestled behind Kent's daughter's gifts. It's pretty creepy looking. So I determined there are five possible explanations for this photograph. Number one, there was a creepy face outside the window looking in that no one noticed at the time. Number two, the creepy person was in the house and was in the shot, closer in the frame than Kent, but somehow their body didn't show up in the photograph. Only the reflection of their face and nothing else. Number three, the face was expertly photoshopped in after the fact. Number four, there isn't a face at all, it's just an illusion created by the lighting and the background. Yes, it looks like a terrifying face, but perhaps that's simply what we want to see. And finally, number five. There is a creepy ghost woman or child that appeared in this photograph. Which of these makes the most sense to you? And if none of these work for you, do you have another explanation? This one is just so creepy to me. The fact that no one noticed the face during the party. This next clip is of Kent's very first encounter with the shadow dude that we spoke about earlier. This shadow dude is an example of a shadow person. A shadow person is an unsettling black silhouette of something resembling a human, but isn't. Seeing a shadow person is incredibly rare, and equally as horrifying. I've personally only encountered one in all of my years into looking into this stuff, and I can remember every single creepy detail about it. If anyone is interested, I'd love to make a video about that in the future. But back to Kent. This was his first encounter with what he called the shadow dude, so I'm gonna let him explain it to you. Oh, f <laughs> With this being the first anomaly that I witnessed here at the Lamb House, what really scared me about this encounter, whatever this was in the window, its arm was moving up and down really fast, as if it was waiting for me to leave the room. This was quite startling. Here are a few more of the strange visual phenomenon Kent has encountered over the years. I have seen a lot of things in still shots and video recordings that didn't make sense. And I also saw a lot of things that were just beyond amazing. Sometimes you'd see this activity in real time. Sometimes you don't even realize you captured something until you view your recording or look at your still shots. This next clip is of whatever it is that resides in Kent's bedroom, escaping from the window back underneath his bed. What this is, I have no idea. This right here seemingly goes from ghosts and spirits straight into cryptozoology. Your guess is as good as mine. It was just sitting there in the window and it looked like it was moving. I ducked behind around the doorway, not knowing what was going to happen, and that thing took off from the window and went under the bed. Okay, there he is, in the window again. Went under the bed. Okay, there he is, in the window again. Went under the bed. Apparently the video footage captured, and what we see on it is completely different than what he saw with his own eyes. After I viewed the video from this encounter, what I saw in the video looked nothing like what I saw in real time. 
in real time it looked like another small shadow apparition sitting in the window. Another fascinating detail to note is that after the fact, Kent went and performed comparative measurements of where the weird blob was to determine how big it actually was. The shadowy alien blob's height came out to be exactly three feet. That doesn't help explain exactly what it is, but it's still a fascinating detail that will be brought back up later in this video. This measurement actually came out to three foot in height. It's become a habit for Kent to walk around with a camera rolling because of the amount of times he's captured something in his bedroom. Whether it's looking out the window, sitting on the bed, creeping around the corner, or hiding behind the window curtains. Kent has even responded to criticism as to why he doesn't stay longer and keep filming when he does encounter his shadow dude. Let's check out his explanation. People have asked me, and I've seen comments on social media, that they can't understand why I don't stand there and get video of an apparition, just hold the shot. I can tell you right now, unless you encounter these, unless you experience this, you have no clue how scary this is. When you see something standing there that does not belong in our realm, it is quite frightening, and your first instinct is to get out of the way. Run. Get away from it. It's almost nearly impossible to hold a still shot on something like this when you're overcome with fear. And I'm not going to deny the fact, yes, I do get scared. This next clip was taken during an EVP session. As Kent was walking around the house asking questions to whatever it is that still lives there with him, he left a camera recording on a tripod and positioned it looking upstairs towards his creepy bedroom. As Kent asked the question, is there anybody in the house right now? The camera facing upstairs captures this terrifying visual. Is there anybody in the house right now? It looks as if the face of a shadow person leans over the railing to peek on what's going on downstairs. When it realizes it's being filmed, it quickly pulls its head back. Just imagine how completely terrifying it was watching that clip for the first time, seeing that head peek over the corner from your bedroom upstairs. In a comparison shot to determine how tall this thing actually was, here's a human leaning over the same staircase railing. As you can see, a human standing up there is much higher up than whatever that was in the original footage. This shows that whatever it was that was leaning over the railing was either on its knees or was very, very short. My brain instantly goes back to when Kent measured the length of the creepy black alien blob and it was three feet long, just the perfect height to look over that railing. The YouTube channel Ghosts of Carmel Main showcases many EVP audio clips, orb photos and videos, and even a few spirit box sessions. But this next clip is by far my favorite of the bunch. This is the most compelling and chilling piece of evidence Kent has captured thus far. It looks as if there is an actual human intruder inside Kent's bedroom. But this human-like apparition disappears as quickly as it seemingly appeared. When I first saw this figure at the window, at first I thought somebody broke into the house and was trying to jump out the window to get away from me. But when I saw the strange head on this figure, this is when I knew this was something supernatural. This was so startling, I turned around and ran out of the room just as fast as I could go. So that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed my quick but deep dive into Ghosts of Carmel, Maine on YouTube. Kent Burris lives in one heck of a haunted house and has captured some truly incredible stuff. My only suggestion for Kent and his channel is that he continues to upgrade his audio and video equipment so that we can have the clearest possible evidence going forward. Huge shout out to him. If you liked what you saw today, be sure to subscribe to his channel 